Well, hello everybody. I'm hoping this is working. This is our first time that we've done this on YouTube. So uh, I'd imagine there's going to be a problem somewhere. So hopefully you can all hear me and you can see uh, my screen here. So this is just a short presentation uh, about the basics of learning journals, the web version of it. So I think most of you who are here will be um, familiar with it. I can see we've got a few people watching already. And, and, and what will happen after this uh, webinar, we will be putting this video onto our YouTube channel straight away. So I think a lot of people will watch afterwards. So if you've never seen the system before, it's uh, here's our website. Hopefully you're, you're um, familiar with this. And uh, what we do is we take the learning journals that you use for children in nurseries and schools, put them online so you're able to share them with parents and uh, take observations more easily. Um, here's our system here. I'm just going to jump straight into things because I know everyone's really busy and they'll need to get back to uh, back to work as quick as they can. So what you're seeing here is um, the rooms for our demonstration nursery. Now, we've got this set up as a typical private nursery, baby room, toddler room, preschool room here, three to fives. But you can have this um, as many rooms as you want. And they can be called anything and they can have all different images. So if you're a primary school, you'd have primary one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many you want. It's just really a way to organize all your child's profiles. So within each of these rooms, that's where your child profiles are organized. So if I click into our three to five room here, you'll see all our children. So you can see we've in our test account here, we've got 10 children, but you can have as many children as you want. There's no limit to that. Um, and they would just all be, they would all appear down here. We've got an image of each one and some basic information about each one here as well. Um, so some of you who have been using the system for a long time might notice there's been some changes in the last uh, few weeks. So um, some of these are these little icons here that I'm, one of them hovering over. This particular one with the little eyeball tells us this child's not had any observations in a certain amount of time. This one here with the parent tells us this child's not got any associated parents. So if I click into one of these profiles, let's choose Alistair here, we're then shown his profile. So what we can see here, Alistair is a child who's uh, in a Scottish nursery. So he's currently following the curriculum for excellence at the early level. He's in the three to fives room and his key worker is Marion Smith. And in the right hand, on the right hand side here, we can see all the observations that have been taken for Alistair. We can scroll down these and we can see them all from newest to oldest. It goes back in time and we see all these observations here. If I focus on the most recent observation, we can see that in each observation, we have the date that it was taken, the curriculum that uh, was involved with this, because we can now take observations over multiple curricula, the description that was entered in by the staff practitioner, in this case, it was Nora Edwards, and if anyone last or modified the observation, it's detailed down here. Any photos or videos that have been associated with the observation are here, and we can have a look at those. There is a child's voice function, which we'll go into in a little bit. And there's also a section for comments, which can be left by the staff or by parents as well. So that's the observation and how that looks. What, uh, as staff, what you will be doing uh, is most of the time, you'll be finding a child's profile and then adding an observation to that. So if I, so the easiest way to do that is to click on add observation up the top of the screen here. So I'm going to take you through the observation creation process. I should have actually said there is a little chat feature, I believe in YouTube. I don't know how that's going to work for me, but if you have any questions, stick them in there. And if somehow I see them, I'll try and answer any questions. So anyway, let's click on this add observation here. So it's what we've tried to do is make this as simple as possible. So there's nothing, um, hopefully confusing for you. It's all dead simple, you just follow the instructions. So here you go, you describe your observation. This is where you put in what you're observing the child or children doing. Um, you can have as little or as much information here as you want. And I know that there are different standards of observation and different requirements throughout the country. 
So what it would be sensible to have is a conversation within your nursery or your school about what a good observation looks like and what the content of that observation should be. Um, now I'm going to put something very, very simple in here. It's the same thing I always put when I'm doing a demonstration and it's just that Alistair uh, was learning to count to 10. So very, very basic and you wouldn't have something as basic as this in your own observations, but for, for this demonstration it will do. Then we've got the child's voice feature. So what this is asking is how did the child feel about the activity um, that they've just been observed doing? Um, we've got three faces here, as you can see, all self-explanatory. And in depending on, on how you want to do it, and in our nursery, I think what we do is we hand the child the tablet or the iPad or they get a shot on the computer and they can uh, choose for themselves how they feel about this activity. And you can ask them to give you a quote here and you can in enter that into this box. So I like counting is what we're going to put in here. There's a box here for next steps. If you um, want to add a next step or a goal based on what you've seen Alistair doing or the child doing, then you can put that in this box. So it could be that we were learning to count to 10 up here, but maybe he was mixing up the numbers or missing out the numbers five, six, whatever. Um, so your next step here might be, I want to, um, uh, Alistair must consistently learn to count to 10. And if you want to, you can track a next step as well. But not every observation needs a next step and not every next step needs to be tracked. So these are optional. The date of the activities, uh, obviously, in here and that's today. But if it was something that happened yesterday or previously or and you haven't had time to write it up yet, you can, you can modify the date. And then you can upload a photo or a video. So uh, you can have up to four photos or videos on an observation. If you're using a tablet, um, when you select this file, it will ask if you want to activate the camera and you can just upload something. I'm gonna upload a couple of images of some pets or animals, but nothing to do with counting to 10, but they're nice to look at. Uh, and they'll lie and that'll do. So we can have three photos here. So there they all are uploaded. And we could have added a video there too if we wanted to. So bear in mind, if you're uploading a video, it will take a bit longer because a video file is a bit larger. Um, so if you're uploading a, a 30 minute uh, nativity play from Christmas, then uh, you might find you run into issues with uh, either bandwidth or things logging out. So moving on to the next stage, uh, this is where we add in our outcomes. So now Alistair is on the curriculum for excellence and at the early level. So what we're immediately displayed are the early level experiences and outcomes. Now, you'll maybe know, if you're a customer already, you'll have noticed in your configuration that there's lots of different curriculum options throughout the country. Um, in England, you'll be on the EYFS. In Scotland, we've got multiple variations of the uh, of the curriculum for excellence. And around the world, we've, we've added in different um, curricula or frameworks as well. So what the system is asking you to do is just choose whichever one applies to your observation and you can use these buttons up the top to go to the different curricular areas. So we're in, let's go into numeracy and maths. We're showing all the numeracy and maths experience and outcomes and we can just choose whichever one we want to. So I'll add in this one here. And you can go across different curricular areas as well. So for example, we're in numeracy and maths, but say it was somebody who was something to do with sciences or technologies, we can go across curricular areas and add in as many of these as we want. And we can go across different uh, curricula as well. So we're in the early level, you can see with this drop down menu here, but we can choose any other ones we want to. So say it was actually across the early level and maybe pre-birth to three as well, then we could have a look at those different uh, outcomes here and you can add them in. Most of the curricula, um, they will ask you to track or assess the child based on what you've seen. By default, it will be a red, amber, green selection, but you can have any, you can actually customize this in your configuration if you don't want to use the terminology of red, amber, green. 
Bear in mind that parents don't get to see any assessment you make. This is only for your internal monitoring and tracking. You can choose to share it with them, of course, uh, but they wouldn't see it by default, just in case they would misinterpret what you've actually done here. So to make a selection, we just choose these little buttons to save the red, amber, green. So some nurses will have this as emerging, expected, exceeding, or developing, consolidating, secure. Uh, you can you can use your own terminology, or if your local authority has terminology terminology that you, that want that they want you to use, uh, you can do that as well. So moving on to the next stage. Now that we've got our outcomes on, we are asked to do progression pathways. Now this title will change depending on what curricula the child is on. In England, this will actually say the characteristics of effective learning and then variations of the curriculum for excellence that will change as well. But it all comes down to the same thing. It's these uh, second level or second tier of outcomes or I can statements. And it works exactly the same way. These are actually optional. You don't have to make a selection on step three. So if you didn't want to choose anything, you don't have to. So for example, this child's using the um, City of Edinburgh Council learning tracker and we can um, add in options from that. So there's the Edinburgh Council numeracy tracker, and let's just add in one option here, or two, why not two? Okay, so now that we've done that, we come on to the last stage, which is about connecting it to any previous next steps. So on the left here, we've got our observation, Alistair was learning to count to 10, and on the right, we've got our active next steps. So these are next steps or goals that this child is actually working towards at the moment already. So we can see this previous observation was, Alistair must be able to choose uh, an activity of interest and play with friends. And another next step is to continue to explore books with them, listening to them as a group. Now, what the system is asking is does this observation achieve any of these next steps because if it does you can connect them together using these little green buttons here so if i was to connect this observation to this next step we would see that now this observation contributes to these next steps and here we go we've chosen this one here we can either choose to say that this next step is now completed uh, or we can leave that unchecked so an, obser uh, an observation, I mean, sorry, a next step may take several attempts from a child to uh, complete the next step. So if we don't choose that the next step is completed, this then becomes what we call a milestone towards achieving that next step. Now I'm gonna disconnect that because these don't uh, actually connect at all. You can then choose whether you want to publish the observation, save it for later, or delete it. So if you save it for later, the observation won't appear on the child's profile when the parent next logs in. So it's if you want to maybe do a draft observation, you've not quite finished doing your description, or you want to upload more photos later on, and you're just not uh, ready for the parent to be able to see that yet, you would save it for later. If you publish it, the parent will get to see the observation. They will receive an email um that evening or sorry within the next 24 hours to say that an observation has been taken on their child and it will encourage them to log in and to leave comments as well uh, a really handy feature is this one down here hopefully you can see this in youtube make your screen a bit bigger uh, but it says publish this observation for other children so this is um, very handy for a group observation where there's lots of children doing the same activity at the same time. So let me just check that and, and show you how it works. We click on finish here. And what we can see is we've got the observation description in here. Alistair was learning to count to 10. And we can see all the different children in Alistair's room here. And we can, if we want to, we can copy this observation over to them. So let's say that Joe and Isabel and Graham were all involved in this uh, particular observation. What we do have to be careful with though is that anything in this box up the top, in the Describe This Observation box, this will be copied over to these children's profiles as well. So currently we're saying that Alistair was learning to count to 10. We don't really want Alistair's name to appear in these um, profiles for these children. So what we can do, we can use this uh, little shortcut up here, the short code, 
And if we, re if we just follow instructions, replace the child's name in the box below with the code, the correct child's name will appear in copied observations. So I just change Alistair to square brackets, first name. But that's all you do. You literally just write first name, lowercase, inside these square brackets. Was learning to count to 10. And when this copies over, it will do the same for these children. Click on begin. That's copying over these observations here. We can see that's all finished now. We go back to Alistair's observations, Axel's profile, and here we can see the observation that we've just taken. It's been created by myself. Here's our description. Here's our photographs of our nice little animals. We can click on this tab here, learning outcomes and progression pathways. And we can see the different outcomes and pathways that were taken for this particular child here. So once again, we've got our red, amber and greens in here, but if parents were to look at this, they wouldn't be able to see this here. And this observation now is added to the list of all the other ones we've done, and it just goes into his profile. We can make modifications to this at any time if we want to. We can edit this observation, say that we've published it and we didn't mean to publish it. We can set it as save for later, and we can save an exit there, come back to our profile, and we can see now this observation is not live, it's been saved for later. Uh, if we want to, we can update the description quickly just in here. And that will, uh, oh, there you go, there's live typing. There we go, so that's been updated. And you can do that if you want to make any quick modifications. Because we did the um, publish the observation for other children, um, that's quite a general observation and description that's gone in there. So you may want to go into each one and then personalize that further by saying a little bit about those children or how they, how they um, performed in that particular task or observation or activity that you were observing. So you can personalize that really quickly with this little box here. Okay, so that's, that's how you take an observation and 95% of the time, that's what staff members will do. And I've taken about, 15 minutes maybe, I have no idea, to do that. Uh, but once you've done it a few times and you've got the hang of it, it's so easy and it's so simple. Um, we do have uh, an app available now for iPads. I'm actually gonna be doing this all again tomorrow, showing you how the iPad app works. It's a companion app for staff only. Um, and we'll be doing the same thing on that tomorrow. But the website that we're seeing here has got a lot more functions in it because it's a little bit more in depth and uh, you can see some of the extra things that we do. So if I click on our home tab up the top, what you see here is a list of observations that we have just done. So we can see that here we took our observation for Alistair. Alistair was learning to count to 10, he did really well. I just modified that one. And you can see we copied it over to Joe, Isabel and Graham. And you can see that this has been, uh, the first name has been changed here. Graham's learning to count to 10. If we want to just confirm that, we can go and click on view here. Here's Graham, and Graham was learning to count to 10, and all the pictures are there too. Okay, so, stay, staying with our home tab, <clears throat> we, next to our observations, which is the summary of all, all the observations that have happened, um, you can see they are all, uh, we can see the status of each observation here as well. We can quickly change that if you want to. So if I want to quickly unsave that, um, sorry, quickly unpublish that, I can stick it to saved. Next to our observations, we've got our notifications tab. So a child will appear on here if they haven't had an observation in the last seven days. So seven days isn't a long time for some of you, especially if your schools or local authority nurseries. You know, if you go on holiday for Easter or summer, everybody will appear on this list. So in your configuration, in your settings, you can now adjust this to whichever number you want. So it's no longer just set to seven days. Uh, you can change that number. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that the child has appeared on here because it may be that Kyle has been on holiday for the last 22 days. But when it gets up to 246 days, we would probably want to speak to Andrea and find out you know, what's going on here? Is Sonia, has she left us? Is she never coming back? What's happened? And you do get children who leave and then will come back. So this is maybe uh, 
you know, this is something you might have seen yourself in your own nurseries. You can put, uh, let's put a reason in here for her, moved to Australia. Um, managers will be emailed this list every Sunday evening so that you are kept up to date with uh, children who have not had observations taken. Next to our notifications, we've got our parent comments. And the parent comments really is uh, one of the huge benefits of the system, or the parent engagement is one of the huge benefits of the system, because before, if you're using paper profiling, the parents would have to come into your nursery or school and physically pick up the folders, look at them, write them in. You would maybe send them home, and they would come back in a, in a different condition than you sent them out in. So with parents being able to um, leave comments, you get much greater parent parental engagement, and you also get, obviously, evidence of that parental engagement there. Now, this is our test account, <clears throat> and uh, we've also not got any real parent comments here. Um, but I have got a screenshot from another nursery. Now, if I anonymized everything here, I'm gonna bring this into your view. So here's a screenshot from another nursery where we can see that we've got parent comments and in the last this is by default the last 90 days we can see they've got 207 comments in the last three months from having spoken to lots and lots of nurseries I, I can tell you that you know having 200 comments in the last three months is quite amazing if you were using an online if you're not using an online system so this is the sort of engagement that you can hopefully expect to have um there as well we've got a tab for reports i'm not going to go into reports today because it's a little bit more in depth and we'll maybe do another video on that another time next to that are parent contributions so there is a section on each profile that you can create if i go back into alistair's uh, profile here if we look down the left hand side of his profile we can see we've got several options and one of these is this blue one and hopefully you can see that but it's called achievements from home you guys can set up your own little blue box like this, which parents can access and they can upload their own sort of mini observations from home, which we call parent contributions. So if I click into this one here, we can see ones that maybe his dad has done. So Alistair was doing really well on his balance bike this weekend. We're getting his new bike next month. And they've uploaded a little photograph about that as well. So these parental contributions, you can, uh, add in as many of these blue boxes as you want. So I've seen ones called My Family or Star Moments or uh, some people actually put in things like um, um, allergies and things. Now, I don't think you should be doing that, but th there's various options and you can really use this however you want to do that. Um, so if I go back into Alistair's observations and let's just stick with his profile down here at the moment. Um, the very bottom you've got the gallery this is the gallery of all the images that have been uploaded for this child so you can see them all in here the parent has access to this as well and they can download this gallery anytime they want as well there's also the option obviously to convert the profile to a pdf so if a child leaves or moves on somewhere you can the parent can do this the parent can do this themselves they can actually convert the profile to pdf you can do it as well if you want to keep a record of it and if a child moves on to another nursery that, or school that also uses learning journals, we can transfer their profiles as well. So um, that, say they've been in private nursery since they were a baby and they go to primary school, their profile can stay with them all the way through primary school, all up to end. So their record of observations and achievement throughout their whole sort of education would, would stay with them. Um, so another thing we've got down here is our learning tracker. So if I click on learning tracker, this shows you the, it's really a snapshot of where this child is right now, and it shows you the, um, really the count and assessment of the observations that have been taken for this child. Now this is a test child, he's not got many observations, so you can see we've got a lot of empty spaces here. Um, <laughs> but what it's telling us is that in each of these areas, we've not got any observations. Here we've got one in expressive arts, we've got some in social studies. You can go into each individual 
curricular area by clicking on the assessment button. And you'll see all the different individual experiences and outcomes. And if you want to, you can manually change these as well. So if we go to this one, we can change it to red, green, whatever we want to do. And these will update the pie chart at the top and in the child's uh, learning tracker as well. You can print this out if you want to, and you can share it with parents if you want to. But this is one of the things that is really for your internal tracking and monitoring. You can share this if you can you can share this with a parent at things like parent consultations. But again, it's the sort of thing that may be misinterpreted by parents. So uh, maybe carefully explain everything that's happening uh, in this view here. Uh, some of the practical things. So if I go back to our our rooms. So here's all the rooms here. We can actually uh, look at this a different way by clicking on this list button. So this is all the children that we've got. And we can see here, again, we've got children who've got no observations. So we can focus in on them and wonder uh, and maybe investigate why have they not got any observations. These ones have got no parents linked to them as well. We can see which curriculum each child's following which room they're currently in and who their key worker is. So if your key workers change for ch child children, you can quickly make some modifications here. Or if the room they're in changes as well, you can quickly change that. So let's say that Evan and Fred here have moved up to the toddler's room, we can do that. And we can see whether the child is active or not. So if the child has left you and you no longer want them on your system, you can send them to your archive by unchecking the box. So let's uncheck Joe Smith. He's now no longer active and he's been sent to our archive. Uh, we can see Joe is in here now. And what we can do at this stage, we can actually delete Joe's entire profile. <sighs> A big warning, if, you're sh if you delete this profile, it'll be permanently deleted and you won't be able to retrieve that data. So before you go and delete anybody, make sure that some of them definitely you don't need again. Um, to add a child is so simple, you just click on the Add Child button, and then you enter in all their information. Uh, you can add as much of this information as you want to in here, choose a correct, the curriculum that they're on to, and choose a key worker, and later on you can upload a photo for them too. Um, you can do the same with staff, dead simple, add a member of staff, and you can choose whether they are a nursery manager or a uh, key worker, external support, and you can actually choose which rooms they have access to. Now the site I'm in at the moment, <clears throat> that's actually, we've set this up as a primary school as well, so for those uh, primary schools out there, these are the different um, roles that you can have as a primary teacher or primary staff, and you have different access to them all as well. We, you can upload a photo for your staff member as well so that parents can see who's actually taking observations. And all you need is a first name, last name, and email address. And it's really as simple as that with the parents as well. Here's a list of all our parents. We can see who they are the parent of, when they last logged in, any comments that they have left, and who their children are. Um, so if we, let's say we've got uh, Melissa Mendez here, who's the parent of Abby Mendez. Let's say she has another child. Click on the children box, and you add in the sibling of Abby here, so let's say that Stuart is her brother. We now have that parent, Melissa Mendez, would now have um, access to both these profiles when they log in. And I'll log in just as a parent in a second, uh, so you can see what that looks like. So back to our parent tab. <clears throat> if your parent ever forgets their login details, you can reset their details with this um, reset button down here. Um, so let's just log in as a parent, actually, so you can see what they see. So if I log out, log back in. So I'm going to log in as our my default parent that I've got here. Every user has their own username and password and also PIN combination. So John is the dad of um, Alistair. You can see he's got access only to Alistair's profile. Scrolls down here. Um, you can see all the different observations. He can leave comments. And you can see the different outcomes that have been applied to this. Obviously, you can't see the different uh, ratings, the red, amber, green. That's hidden from John at the moment. He can convert the profile to a PDF. 
uh, if he wants to download or print, and he can download all his gallery, any reports, and he can add his own achievements from home here as well. So there's not much parent can do, but they do get access to all their child's information, and they can download everything they want to, obviously, as well. Okay, uh, we'll just log back in as our staff member. So one last thing I want to do on the tracking, uh, which as managers or you know heads or deputy heads, whatever you might find useful. But if we go back to our children tab, there's a button marked cohort tracking, and what we do is when we see this, we can make some um, selections. So let's choose our, our level again and see what we've got. Now we haven't got many children in here, so it's a quite an empty quite an empty account. But what hopefully you can see here is that down the left hand side we have all the children and along the top we've got the different areas of this curriculum. So this looks different for each curriculum obviously. <clears throat> and what we can see are uh, a lot of boxes for each organizer or curricular area and what that tells us is what this child has been observed. So this is automatically completed by the system and you can get a uh, a quick overview of how um, different groups of children are working, different ages of children are working. Uh, what it's helpful for is if we look along a row, we could see that Jennifer here has not had many observations in any of the curricular areas. And if we look down the columns, we can see that which children have not had. So we can see that all the children have had an activity and sport observation here. And what it would do is help, well, why is why does Sonia not have one here? Why has Alistair not got one here? So that will help you focus in on areas where there's not as much coverage or where there's a different level of ability uh, between different children or between different groups. Um, there is an option to make this as PDF, but the, you, know, you can see that this is quite a large um, screen here and it becomes quite unwieldy if you're printing out. So we advise to print this screen as little as, as possible. The same as on the learning tracker with the pie charts, you can actually uh, manually make changes to this as well. So say Jennifer, we know that Jennifer has, um, she's secure with her 2D and 3D area of the curriculum. We can click on that box and we can say that actually she's green in that. And let's say that she's green in, in all of her numeracy for the R level. Uh, you'll see that this got a little M here. This is telling us that we manually amended this and manually made that assessment because realistically, you're not going to be, taken, be able to take an observation on every child at every level of the curriculum, every curricular area. So if you want to make a manual assessment or manual judgment, using your professional opinion, then you can do that there. <clears throat> um, okay guys, so that's the basics. And I did promise I was gonna try and keep this to half an hour and I've gone a little bit over. Uh, we'll be doing this again for our iPad app. So if, you, um, there's a, if you've already done it, there's a little uh, registration form on our website if I go back to that here. So here's learningjournals.co.uk. If you want to come along tomorrow, same time for the um, iPad app webinar. Go to the online demo page and fill out the form here, first name, last name, email address, that's all we need. We'll send you a link tomorrow morning with the YouTube link again, or you can just come back to our channel and somewhere in here, there's an option to view live streams, so you could do that. But sign up and we will remind you of the link in the morning. If you don't already use Learning Journals and you want to sign up for a free trial, you can do that by going to our free trial up here. Complete this form. We'll get that, your account created for you. We need some information so we can set up your account. So it's really just your address, what rooms you have, for example, and how many children you need. And we will get that set up for you and send through uh, your login details. Hopefully that's been useful. I hope it's actually worked because as I say, this is the first time we've used YouTube. Uh, the video will be available to watch again. If you have any specific questions on anything, you can always contact us either through the website 
um, through this contact form here or just email info at learningjournals.co.uk with any questions you've got we'll give you uh, sorry we'll help you with that and you can also phone us on the number up the top of the screen as well all right well thanks very much guys uh, and hopefully we'll see you see some of you tomorrow for our ipad demonstration cheers